In this lesson, we'll learn about drilling in five axis. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a 3 plus 2 drilling operation and use duplicate to copy an operation. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example and let's start to talk about drilling in multiple axes. So what we want to do now is we want to focus our attention on drilling the holes that are located in their own coordinate systems. What I mean by this is they're not aligned with any of our X, Y, and Z axes right now. So we want to learn how to set up these drilling operations, align them, copy them, and make patterns of them so that way we can reuse them over and over again. So to get started, we're going to create a new drilling operation. We want to go into our tools and notice that when we come into the tool library, there are a lot of tools in here that we aren't using. Now this is because this file originally had some additional setups that were removed. And I want to use this because we can right click and we can select remove unused tools to simplify what we see here. So we want to make sure that we're only looking at the tools that we've used so far to program this part. We're going to start by selecting tool number one, which is our spot drilling tool. And notice again, it's already oriented with our Z axis. So this is our traditional three axis coordinate system, but we need to tell it that we want to drill a different hole that's not within the same coordinate system. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to select the hole that I want to drill. Then I'm going to modify the tool orientation and I'm going to select the Z axis and the X axis. And I'm going to do this by selecting the inside bore of this hole, the same one that I chose for the selection of actually drilling the hole. So this automatically aligns my Z axis and notice that we now get a preview on the screen of the tool. You can see where it's starting all the way out here. It does a rapid movement in, it feeds, it's going to do our spot drilling operation and it's going to come back out. We do need to be a little bit careful here because the geometry that we're starting with is not this counter bore. There's actually solid material out here. So we need to be aware of where that green line starts, where the starting position is. So everything looks okay here. So I'm going to say, okay, and I'm going to replicate this in a different location. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to duplicate it and the duplicate, I'm going to right click and edit. So for my selected hole face, I'm going to come over here this time and I need to reselect my Z axis. So notice now the orientation of the Z axis isn't correct. I need to make sure that it's pointing not only in the right direction, but that I flip it so that positive Z is pointing away from the hole. You'll notice as soon as I get the orientation correct, now I can see a preview on the screen of that operation. So now we have a drilling operation that'll spot this hole and this hole. What we can do now is we can use these and we can repurpose them to actually drill the holes as well. So I'm going to right click on drill four and I'm going to duplicate it again. And notice that it puts it directly after it. So I'm going to drag it down to the bottom and then I'm going to edit. So the first thing I want to do is change the tool. In our cloud library, I want to use the half inch drill, which is tool number three. And then inside of my geometry, the hole is still selected, but I need to go into my heights and change the bottom height to a selection. I want to drill all the way to this bottom face. And then I want to allow the tip to come through the bottom. And then I want to change the cycle type. We're going to set it to chip breaking and then we're going to say OK. So now I've got my spot drill operation on both sides and I've got my drilling operation. I'm going to repeat this process by duplicating my fourth operation and then again dragging it to the bottom and then making a change. So again we want to reselect the tool and this time again we're going to be using our half inch drill. Then we want to make sure that the heights are okay. So we'll reselect the bottom height as a selection. And we'll make sure that the tip goes through the bottom and then change the cycle type to be chip breaking. So as we're looking at this, we first have our spot drill on the left, spot drill on the right. Then we have our drilling on the left and drilling on the right. As we're thinking about these, we need to make sure that the order of operations makes sense. So by dragging them around, we can have our operation on the left, then the right, 
and then we can have our drilling on the right and the left. So even though we have a tool change, it'll simplify the process of moving the part and the tool around. So this is a way that we can create these operations and duplicate them to save a little bit of time and work in the setup. So let's go ahead and navigate back to a home position and let's rename some of these operations. So I'm going to call this one spot 5x1. So I'm going to consider this as my position one. And then I'm going to call this one spot 5x2 for position two. And then this one here is going to be drill 5x2. And the nomenclature used here really depends on the part that you're working with, the industry that you're working with. And uh, really there, there's no convention here that says that you need to name these things in this order or even that you have to rename the toolpaths. But it certainly helps with organization. You also have the ability to select multiple toolpaths and add them to folders to help organize the structure as well. But once we've renamed these four operations, let's go ahead and save the file before we move on to the next step.